Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Hannah Levine about brand new uh, cherry flavor on Netflix. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for being here. Oh, this is so fun. Thank you. And thank you for dealing with my technological fail setting up today. <laughs> no problem. I mean, last time you came on the show, we talked about Siren. Yes. This is obviously a different show compared to Siren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was yeah. it like diving into the world of brand new cherry flavor? Well, the funny thing is I booked and started working on brand new cherry flavor basically like two weeks. I'd already booked it right before I finished Siren season three and basically went from marrying Calvin and Siren and the whole yeah. wedding and all these things to like the next week being on set for brand new cherry flavor. And there's a character with her face wrapped in bandages, serving us grilled cheese in the store. <laughs> and I was like, this is not Bristol Cove anymore. <laughs> um, but it, I mean, brand new cherry flavor was such a cool shift in material and tone and character that I was really looking for. Yep. You know, three years of Siren was such a great time. And, um, I loved playing Janine, but stepping into Christine, gosh, those names almost rhyme. Um, stepping into that new world and territory, especially the fact that it was based on a book, it just felt like it was so rich with explore, like things to explore that it was really exciting and like a little intimidating to be, begin a project like that and just think, gosh, this is, there's so much to delve into, but yeah. Um, more than anything, I was just really excited. <laughs> was there interest in you? Maybe not like, was there interest in the genre of like horror and thriller and suspense and like creepy things growing up? Like, did you like enjoy that, those type, that type of content? Like, was there, cause like, there's a lot happening. Like that's pretty scary in the, in the in show. show yeah. Um, did you like, what was your familiarity with like horror, horror culture before like signing on to this? Uh, so I'm gonna sound super um <laughs> i don't know i want to say horror inexperienced but a little bit horror inexperienced like i haven't seen some of the quintessential horror movies like oh, i have it's seen... fair absolutely yeah i haven't seen carrie i've seen part of the shining which i do actually need to finish like it's pretty phenomenal for sure um i there's so many horror movies i've not seen rosemary's baby like like famous ones you know but it's definitely a genre like I'm interested in. I love a good thriller. Yeah. Um, my more more favorite sort of horror, memorable horror movies have been more like the Scream kind of era. Oh, absolutely. Definitely was into those like um, in my youth. And then uh, I really enjoyed recently Hereditary. Yeah. Um, and, and just that really interesting world of the psychological horror. I love Nick Antosca, one of my showrunners on Brand New Cherry Flavor, him and Lenore Zion, they're our two showrunners. They, Nick's former show, Channel Zero, was a really So cool, good, yeah. Yeah, such a great psychological so freaking good, yeah. horror series. And Lenore was a writer on that also. So I definitely love that space. And I think it's a really cool world right now where filmmakers and TV creators can really take some interesting risks. Yeah. And um, I think that's really, really exciting. So I would say I'm definitely interested in the genre. I've got to put in some hours. You know, Halloween's coming up, so... <laughs> That's like the I best think, time to just watch a lot. I remember like me, like it, yeah. it, it's a great time to watch horror movies for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm not exactly squeamish at all, um, but it's like, you know, horror is that extra, it's beyond thriller. It goes to that extra level. Well, I just asked because, you know, it's funny. I've seen previous interviews and I've interviewed people from some of my favorite horror movies and to hear them I just find it very interesting, Hannah, when you hear from, like, people that are in some of, like, the scariest movies, like, they're acting in it, that, like, they can't do horror movies or they, they're scared of them. Like, I find that, like, very interesting because it's a job. It's work, right? It's a job. You're going in a horror movie, but, like, you, you can't do the horror genre, but you're, like, the scariest movie. I, I, so that's why I was just curious what it was before signing with Brand New Cherry Flavor. <laughs> Well, the thing about Brand New Cherry Flavor, too, is that my characters, like, when the marketing came out for it um, just this past couple of months with Netflix, 
they really were pitching the horror really strongly. Yeah. And I I read all the scripts for the show. Like I knew what it was. And but I was like, oh my God, I guess it is a horror. Like I didn't think of it like that because my character's story is not I don't really take part in a lot of those elements no. of it. No. Um absolutely not. So for except, you know, that big I don't want to give things away, but like that big sequence around the body, yeah. the blood, like that was definitely like, whoa, this show just took a turn for my character. Um, but I, I was, a, I, I kind of had to remind myself, oh, that is what the show is. Just my character, Christine, her journey in it is not, it, it's kind of its own absurd genre. I don't even know what I would call. Well, that's, that was actually my next question because I'm in really, and the same thing for music too. Like I love a lot of stuff. Like, I think content these days is like genre bending. Like I don't think it's staying in kind of one box of like it's horror, it's drama, it's comedy. Like I think we're kind of throw like some thing like shows like Brand New Cherry Flavor I think do a really good job. I mean, it's pretty genre bending. There's a lot mm -hmm. of genres happening in this show. A hundred percent. I think when it came out, I remember, or right before, I remember talking to Nick and Lenore and just saying, like, how are you guys feeling? And, like, the overall comment was, we're just so stoked that we got to make this show and that it's going on Netflix. <laughs> like, because yeah. it takes so many risks and it has so many absurd elements to it and just really cool concepts and, and, and just some strange stuff. And that we were able to make it and that it can go out there and that people are responding to it, I yep. think, is um such it's just really cool it's great that there's an audience for it that there's a platform for it that they're willing to take those risks um and i i'm just really glad to be a part of it it's amazing they're saying we're in the golden age of television right now and i agree with that statement but i think there's a lot of reasons why we're in the golden age of television hannah but I think there's one core reason, in my opinion, uh -huh. that stands out for me at least. Because um, people are going to talk about, oh, there's so many amazing shows, more like streaming platforms, and more like opportunities, and the, it looks amazing. Like Brand New Cherry Flavor, too. Like, and just the cinematography aspect, it blows your mind, right? But I think the main reason why we're in the golden age of television is the global access and the ability for so many countries in an instant to watch brand new cherry flavor on Netflix. Like it drops on Netflix and over 190 countries get to watch it. Does that not blow your mind? It's pretty crazy. It did blow my mind. And being an Australian actor, I've been working in North America mm -hmm. a long time and constantly there are shows I'm in that people can't see back home. So there was definitely a thrill factor and like a little terrifying factor for me that knowing on that Friday the 13th, like it was going all over the world that my family, my friends, you know, people I worked with way back when in Australia could all watch this thing that I was a part of. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. And it's, I mean, it's great. I'm on social media and it's great to just be getting like yep. sent artwork and comments from people all over the world, watching it, Twitter, like just sharing in this, it, you know, in a time where I feel like the world does feel quite separate and shut down in areas and all these things, it's really nice to be a part of something that all of a sudden felt like it's connecting at least the people watching it, you know? So, Absolutely. No, yeah. for sure. Takeaway wise with brand new cherry flavor, have you thought about that at all? Like, cause like we, we established like it is genre bending. It's got, it's kind of gore moments. It's a bit, it's scary at times. There's a lot happening, but like, have you thought about what you're hoping people get out of it when they've watched it? Uh, what do I hope people get out of it? It's a good question. Um, I think, that they've gone on a journey yep. with with Rosa's character Lisa Nova that and with Lou Burke and Boro that they've been a part of this um world that we're all in that I guess their senses are really like tickled and sort of um like it's like a bit of a it's like a trip it's like yeah. I've been on a trip I, I went in and watched the show and I came out and was like holy hell that was yeah. a lot <laughs> um and I think just, yeah, expanded. I hope people feel expanded by watching it in, in every sense of the word. Absolutely. What um, what can you also tell us in terms of your preparation for this role? I mean, you know, your car character 
um, is going through, like, there's a lot happening with, like, the surroundings and everything. How do you prepare for something like that? Whereas compared to Siren, where, um, you know, there is a lot happening with your character, but there's a lot happening in your character, like, for this one, completely different kind of, <laughs> like, circumstances. Like, how do you go from, like, one role to another? I'm curious about that. Well, I think with Siren, the beauty and that was I'd been doing it for three seasons so I feel for like sure, I've got yeah. a, a pretty good handle of Janine and the relationships so um I you know had that been a really new project it might have been a bit more jarring going from one to the other but I felt like also there was a bit of completion with Janine and, yeah. and she was getting married and sort of reaching the end of her story and we didn't know at that point that Siren wouldn't go for another season but um I did feel kind of pretty comfortable in in that world and then with Brandy Cherry Flavor, it was just so absurd and so different. I really just had to dive in the deep end with it. And I think what really helped with Christine was well, reading some of the scripts ahead of time is great. I think I read at least the first four episodes before we even went to camera. I had a great sit down with uh, Manny Jacinto, who plays Code, my boyfriend on the show, and Nick and Tosca, the showrunner. We all talk things through ahead yeah, of time. Yeah, for sure. What What was our relationship? I started reading the book uh, by Todd Grimson, Brand New Cherry Flavor. And then I got my wig. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, I have this crazy blonde. It was inspired by Debbie Harry, Blondie, um, who I adore. So that was just like... I don't know. I was already like pretty stoked just with that. And then my costume fittings were really helpful in just kind of having these shoes to fill in, in who I thought Christine was and finding my way there. And I had a my acting coach working with me and just breaking down all the scenes, getting experimental. I had like a little animal persona for the character going, um, which if anyone can guess what the animal was, that I will give you like five bucks. <laughs> um, and just music, getting absorbed in the time. I love music of that era. I think I was just kind of taking whatever I could get to really like get myself 100% in that world and ready to go. Absolutely. And I wanted to thank you so much for coming back on Pop Turnitin. It was great to catch up and chat with you. So good to see you too. Um, one of the, I want to know what one of your other reasons is why you think we're in the global age of TV. I think it's it's a combination of like what I said about the, the access, but mm -hmm. I just love, I just it blows my mind that like it hits so quick like people can watch mm -hmm. it because it's all the different time zones and everything mm -hmm. I, it's the global aspect but i also think it has to do with the fact that when i grew up grew up in canada you know i was so limited with what i was able to watch mm -hmm. like it was so limiting right mm -hmm. same and like, in australia yeah, yeah and now it's like completely thrown out of the window but i also have to say too the like how things look now blows my mind too like the cinematography like people go i don't know if, about you i mean you're you're filming a show but did it not feel like you were filming like a movie like oh, tv yeah. show right yeah. like it, i mean for us you props to siliana dana zao dp who i think is toronto mexico based yes um, forgive me if that's not right she's just brilliant and it was like a film and it was kudos to her very very hard work and our camera team and really creating this language with the camera that they were doing all these really long shots. We had a lot of long scenes, like oh, oh yeah, five, six page scenes, which translates at like five, six minutes on camera, which is a long scene. If you're thinking an episode of TV is like 40, 45 minutes an hour. Yep. So, um, you know, just these really long moving camera scenes that are really typical in film, not so much in what you, we used to know as TV. So, extra level of technical difficulty for everybody and and they just did the most insane job and it's yeah i am just in awe of what our team did on the show so those are my two reasons why it's the golden age yes. the global <laughs> access and how they how the, the shows quality. are looking these days it's yeah. amazing um brand new cherry flavor is available now on netflix so they can watch that right now if they haven't already and uh where can people keep up to date with you on social media like instagram twitter is that where they go yeah, yep. I'm on both Instagram and Twitter. And um, yeah, I'd love to hear from people. Love to hear what you think of the show if you're watching it. 
<laughs> Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turn at YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, it's Hannah Levine from Brand New Cherry Flavor, which is on Netflix now, and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.